All right, the wood order is in. Let's get busy. I use a very weird finishing solution. You need to stay tuned at the end because I tried several solutions and ended up only finding one that really worked. Hello. Hey, any of you guys remember a while back I had some leftover epoxy? So I just took a piece of this old rotten burl and put it in a deal there and poured it in there. And just left it, you know, rather than pour it out. So I decided I'm going to make something out of it. And what I'm going to do is I got me a piece of old spotted oak I found out there in the yard. I'm going to make a plug out of it. That's a resin saver, some people call it that. I'm going to put it in there and then I'm going to take this, the rest of this and go there on the saw and just cut chunks that will fit in all the way around. Then I'm going to pour the reddest resin I can find in there because my wife still says it ain't doing bright enough bowls. So anyway, I've got this. we got it cut. I believe it's six inches. So it'll stick up about like so. Now I'm going to do something a little different here. I know this is wet. So I'm going to turn this down to, I think I... I remember right, let me look here real fast. Uh, yeah, about about four and a half inches, I guess. Maybe four. Yeah, four inches. So I'm going to turn this down to four inches. And when I put it in here as a plug, I'm going to do something a little different because, you know, this is wet. And that wet and resin don't mix real good. So a couple of solutions I've seen for doing this is some people... Mix a little bit of epoxy and coat it up and let it sit. And I've done it several times by just using sealer and let it sit. But I decided when I get this the way I want it, I'm going to wrap it in saran wrap. Just really wrap it so that, you know, it can't get into it. And we'll see what happens. Never tried that before. Could put it in dehydrator, but that'd be a pain in the butt. Anyway, I got it cut. So what I'm doing now... Well, first I'm going to put it between centers to turn it. So I take a, a drill with a one inch Forstner bit and I drill the center as anywhere I want it, I guess it don't much matter. And one end. Okay, let me do that real quick. All right. Now I drill at the depth of, the, of the, the head of the bit is the way I do it. All right, now I'll come off on the other end and I'll take a uh, step drill and I'll define where I want the center to be. I mean, that could be anywhere actually. And I'll make me a place in this end like a cone. And well, well, that must be punky. All right, that's all I'll do there. And Get the air over here and blow it out. And I split off my center, but like I said, I can make it any way I want. All right, that's good. Now what this does, this isn't the one I'm going to use, but it'll serve the purpose. One I'm going to use is already on there. What it does is you take your your drive, and it can it goes in that right there like that, and uh, it, it just can't come out. No slipping, no nothing. Same thing applies on this end. When you put your live center in there, it's got a place where it sits in there like that. So you've got it captured like a big ball. All right, I got it on here. all wrapped up in saran wrap waiting on my hot glue gun to get hot I cut the bottom out so the hot glue would stick there and I'm going to sit it right there best I can and maybe put some tape over it I don't know depends on how centered it is alright I'm about ready to start this pouring mess uh, I'm going to be using fix set 
from a tour boat. And the reason I like using this is that it is real thin and it takes a long time to set up. So with this, these burls in here, they got lots of holes in them. So you really need some time for the epoxy to work its way in the holes. And of course, when I pour it up to about here, at the top today, by the morning it'll probably be an inch down, so I'll have to do a, a second pour. So anyway, I'm going to be using red dye. Red, red, red. All right, I'm going to let that sit for a minute and then put it in the pressure pot. Well, good morning. I just pulled this out of the pressure pot and uh, you know, I had the cellophane on, on the plug, and I, I went ahead and, and cut it off, and what I immediately felt was it was wet inside. So it looks like, you can see the moisture in the plug right there. It looks like this cellophane held all the moisture inside there, which is, you know, it's what I was after, rather than having to dry it or seal it or something. So it looks like, you know, it, uh, it's going to take another day before I can turn it. Because if you take your fingernail and you do that, you can leave a mark, see? Well, as long as you can do that, it's not ready. Yeah. You know, do my little nail check as hard as a rock. So here, here's what I do. I ain't real sure that this is real flat. And I know where I want my center here. So what I do is I, I leave these loose, all right? I put two screws in it and I'll leave them loose. Well, the first thing I do is I screw it on all the way. Try to. Come on now. All right, there you go. And then I know where my center's here, so I put the uh, tailstock in it, where my center's gonna be, right there. And I push it up to it, and I look at it around here. Okay, you see right here, I got a gap. I got a gap right there, see? So if I just had screwed this down like that, you know, without anything under here, this whole thing would have wobbled even more than it does. So what I do, and I know it's not what everybody does, but I find it's easier to clean up something later than it is to have a flying bowl. All right, stay, hang with me a second here. I'm getting getting orientated this morning. I just walked out. All right, you see I got this I got this crack right here. And if I tighten all, if I put the screws in and tighten them up, well, you know, I'm gonna have a, gonna be a whoppy dude. So I take this real super thin filler right here. If I can get it in there, I do anyway. All right. Now you guys know, when I turn epoxy, I turn it fast. So this is probably not the worst idea I ever had anyway. So I do that, fill that up, and then I go ahead and uh, put me a good portion of CA glue on it. I move to the side so I don't have to breathe the crap. All right. There you go. The rest of it looks real good. Because when I spin this thing at 3,000 RPM, I ain't exactly wanting it to go flying away. Well, it don't hurt to do this. simple. I'm going to come back here with a little roll medium on it, star bond medium. And I'm going to just double do it here. If I can get it to come out. There you go. And it's a little harder to get off and you know it's 
You gotta clean it off, but so what? I mean, I, I, things are clean things, you know. Cellophane out of my way. See, this, this plug is, is here is, is a little on the punky side. And not only that, it's uh, in grain. So you're pretty wise to take any precautions. Now I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of uh, cellulitic stuff. I don't normally use it, but I will this time. There you go, they are to get it. I'll give that a minute, I'll take it off and finish it. Tightening those screws and put the rest of them in. You won't be ready to put this thing on and whirl it up. Oh man, it's a resort to my big fan today. I'm gonna open the big doors anyway. I'll catch you in a little bit. All right, I got everything mounted. Now you guys know I like to throttle it up. I done whirled it up to 3,000, it looks all right. It's gonna be a little rough in the beginning. I'll start off with a square cutter with a two inch radius. And I'll come in here at uh, 45, nice and slow. I'll come over here to the end and then I'll come in this way, same thing down this way. If you come like this on the end, you're gonna, you're gonna chip a big chunk right off the end. So you better off to come within all oh, half inch or so and come back this way with it. Uh, face you wrong. That's worth it. Let's see what we got going here. I nice start off a little slow, about 2,500. Take the end of that. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this cutter. See, I just totally got rid of the chip. Had a few right nice. here. That's 3200 right there. See right here, it made a difference right there. See, it's got a little bit of a, there's a rough spot right there. Cause that, I noticed it was hanging me up right in here. This is mild steel. I wish I had a hardened one. I don't. But what I got. Here. With 3,300.
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the sealer on this. All right, I've got to... Uh, I got it sprayed down pretty good. I'm still not happy with it. It seems to want to have these dull spots here and there, but what I decided to do is just uh, let it really harden up till tomorrow morning and then sand it and, and try it again. It's like maybe this, this wood has some oil in it or something. Could be, you know. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this reversed and get that face plate off. And then we'll, we'll start on the inside. All right, I'm ready to start this. Right about here is the black line. You can see it. Uh, so that's how far I'm going. And this center is it's pretty punky wood. Uh, so I'm hoping it drills easy. Uh, that's pretty good distance in there. You know, I could haul without drilling a hole, but I sort of like a hole. All right, I'm. Got the hole real. It still is. Must have been something in that wood because it, it's like coming out and it's like gooey. I don't know what it is. I'm going to proceed. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it, but I am going to proceed. I just I want to do this a little while. I want to. I like to do this for a while to really test that uh, chuck or, or recess out, um, and then I'll remove it and we'll and then do some deep I think I'm going to move this. That way I can get in there and get something done, maybe. Turn this about to 2000, but I'm so afraid to. All right, well, came out this morning, it was all, it was all gooey again, even after putting that poly on it. You know, I put everything I can think of, so here's my last resort right here. This is a total boat quick set epoxy, and I'm going to coat the inside and outside with it. And if that don't stop it, I guess we'll have a sticky bowl. It's, you know, something, it's something about that, that, uh, that red old burl, it's like it has an oil in it or something, I don't know. It's out there so long, full of termites, maybe it's... Maybe it's termite poo or scat, as they say on TV. I don't know what it is, but I do know I don't like it. So anyway, I've done stirred that a while. I'm not tired of stirring. This has got a 10 minute gel time, so let's just uh, get after it, I guess. Uh, did I see, did you see if I got the core going? Okay, good. So I guess, I don't know. It's, it's pretty thick. I can thin it, you know. But I really don't want to. 
Because when, when I get this all on, I'm going to it be an adventure, guys. That's about it. If I keep messing with it, I'll uh, screw it up, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go put some color in this and pour it in my pin bowl. Might as well. Okay, good morning. Well, I had epoxy I put on last night. Didn't do the trick. You see right there? Nothing adheres to it. And uh, along the ridge, there's a couple places too. See, there's a little one, there's one, there's one, there's one. There's two big ones. And nothing sticks to it. I racked my brain half the night trying to figure out what's going on, and I think I figured it out. Now, I don't know if some of you guys remember or not, but I'm, this burl came off a big old dead red oak right there in my yard, and it was, uh, the burl was full of termites. Well, when I brought it in here to, to sand it, or not sand it, to, you know, to cut it up and stuff like that on a bandsaw, uh, I, didn't, I didn't have any bug spray, you know, to kill the termites. I should have used my big vacuum cleaner. I mean, that thing will suck start a Harley, so... You know, I know it would have sucked them out, but I didn't think of that. So anyway, I uh, not having a bug spray, I always use uh, apple cider vinegar and water for fleas on my dog. So I sprayed it, sprayed the burl down real good with it and soaked it. And I think it's either, I don't know, apple cider vinegar must have some oil in it or something. That's the only thing I can think of. But anyway, I'm... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some medium CA and try to see if it'll, it'll hang in there a little bit. I don't know if it will or not on those spots, and then I'm going to wet sand it to see if that straightens out. It's got a little trash in it anyway, so uh, it's sort of like, here we go again. But you know, I'm not happy with that, and I'm, I'm the type of person, I don't let things go if I'm not happy with it. I'm going to take the end of a paper towel, not my finger. And it looks like it's fish eyeing on me. A little more. Try to build it up a little bit. Alright, I'm going to start with 180. Now this is, is uh, Dawn dish detergent. No, yes it is. Yeah, it's Dawn and uh, warm water. I found over the years that it really keeps your paper clean and it leaves no residue. Now your dish detergent or your detergent you put in there, if you're a painter, you need to make make sure, you know, look at the ingredients because some people use like coconut oil and stuff in them and that does not work well when it comes to painting. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can get a couple of these spots by hand. Just going to knock them down a little bit. up high I sanded it a little with 320 and right there you gotta look for them you know all right let's do the bottom that of course that has sit all day all night so I guess we're about done in here for a while I'll catch you later well the bowl gods are against me today or whatever seems like I can't win so I had this I poured that tabletop epoxy on, on the bottom of this with my logo under and I had this one damn bubble that wouldn't go away so I kept hitting it with a torch and I hit it one time too many. Let me get after it with a sander. No need you watching. I get her all polished and done. We'll, we'll play wrap up on this one. And we'll start another one. Okay, well, I've got the, the bottom all sanded down to about 6,000 grit. And what I've done is I put a little bit of axe paste on here and also on this wheel. And smear it around real good. And 
and tried this before. I've, I've tried it with on this, but I put it in here this time. Put it in the wheel. That sanding it made this concave in the center, which is actually a good thing. Be careful not to get this hot now. All right, let's see what it looks like. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to put the uh, paste over on this one. And it's still got a little bit of a haze on it here. I think that's it. There you go, this rascal is be done. D-O-N-E, and it has been a journey. Yeah, there you go, guys, it's all done, and I guarantee you this one's been a trip. Learned a lot. One thing which I, I take out of this more than anything is I really like the epoxy finish. And once you get it on, and once it sits up for a day or so, it sands fairly easy, and it polishes like you wouldn't believe, and it makes it really, really durable and for sure food safe and you know you could fill it with water if you wanted to and you wouldn't have to worry about it so anyway I, I got the bottom all done tell you off here i got a tea light in here he's over here where i know you can see it good see i got a tea light inside of here back up all right so there it is and the bottom turned out i think the bottom turned out pretty nice it's still got just a little, it's not like the original. You can never get to like that original tabletop out of it, but it's, I mean, it's really nice and smooth. It's still got that one dang little air bubble and one there and one there. I, I fought that, but that's neither here nor there. But the big thing is all the outsides, you know, where it had all those, let's call them dry spots, or where sap or something was creeping out, they're gone. That little one right there, just didn't quite get the stuff on it thick enough. But I'm not going to go back and do it just for that. And the inside, inside really turned out nice. And what's weird is it didn't have none of those flat spots on the inside or none of that. That's a beautiful figure in this burl. If you look right here, see all that pretty figure in there? Right, make sure that you guys can see it. I, I can't hardly see the viewfinder. Sorry about that. And there and there. And got the gold up there at the top. Might have should have stuck with red. I don't know. You know, you do these things and and you really don't know till you're done. But anyway, there it is. I'll take a couple of stills. Well, anyway, I appreciate you sticking with me on this one. All right, there you go. Call your mama. <laughs>